Okay, are you um, able to share, Alessandro? Yeah. Sh shall I? Share your slides. Um, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so we are continuing our uh, series of new CPR, International Trade and Regional Economics uh, member series with our young colleagues. Uh, this week, we are uh, listening to Alessandro Sforza uh, at University of Bologna, who is recently not in Bologna right at this moment. Uh, and I'm not too far from him. So I'm in a hotel room in Padua. Uh, and looking forward to it, Alessandro. So Alessandro prefers if people uh, jump in and ask questions. We've been pretty informal so far. We go until uh, 5 p.m. Central European time. So take it away, Alessandro. Thank you so much for, for, for the introduction and thanks a lot for allowing me to, to present here. And I mean, I'm very, very happy and, and honored to be part of this, of this network. Um, so, so today, um, just tell me if you can see my slides full screen, yeah? So as Kerem just said, I'm very happy to take questions, uh, clarification question and any question that any of you have during the, the talk, um, whenever you want, just jump in and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to, to, to figure that out. I prefer it over the chat because I, tend not to, put a to, to pay enough attention to the chat while I'm, I'm, I'm talking. So I wanna start um, today with a little bit of, a, of a, an overview, let's say of an introduction about this paper, but more broadly about what I like to do. So my research agenda, let's say. Um, and this paper, it's a, it's a very good chance for me to, to talk a little bit about my research agenda because it, in both, like it embeds the two things that I like uh, doing research on. On the one hand, um, trade, so geography, and you know this idea of uh, of the interconnection between trade and um, people moving around and the geography of, of 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 production in general. And on the other hand, uh, the other part of my research agenda deals more of with organizational economics. So how do firms organize? Why do they organize in a certain way? How important are specific workers, specific type of workers in the in the in determining firm performance and then eventually aggregate outcomes. And this paper is a little bit um, a bridge between these two research agenda. It is in fact a paper about um, so I'm not gonna look at firms and managers, but I'm gonna be expert when they work for firms that expert. So in a way, this paper is gonna condense a little bit with this element of the organizational economics and the, the, the export and the, the, the trade side of my, of my research. This is joint work with Luca Davido Promollo, who's at the moment at, at NC State and is also affiliated with Bank of Portugal. And he's also joint work with Giordano Mion, who's recently moved uh, at ESSEC in, in France. So the title of the paper, it's kind of uh, self-explicative uh, and it's the value of managers export experience, lessons from the Angola Civil War. So I'm gonna start with a, with a very uh, kind of uncontroversial statement, let's say, which is the following, that exporters tend to be usually larger and more productive than non-exporters. And we kind of know that we, especially in this audience of trade economists, uh, I don't have to justify why it is the case, but we still observe some uh, heterogeneity among exporters. So some exporters manage to have a superior performance compared to other exporters. Now, there are many explanations for that. You know, um, it could be that they are more productive. It could be they have better managerial practices. It could be that, you know, their downstream factors, especially the number of customers has been shown by recent research by Bernat and Goder, can play an important role in determining you know, why some exporters can achieve a superior performance and, and be bigger in size. But we think that maybe that's not all. So what we try to do in this paper is to investigate how managers help firms growing by entering a new export market. Now, this is gonna be a, like, you know, the, 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 main, the main question that we try to answer today. And we're going to try to make progress looking at different things. But in general, why do we think it's, it, this is a relevant question? Well, the 
First, it is not clear what is the nature of this manager's contribution, right? So do managers help the firm reducing the fixed cost of exporting or do they help reducing the variable cost for accessing new markets? Do they help reaching a more broad audience or do they help the firm to uh, specialize and so have a specific customer audience? We kind of don't know the answer to this question, but on top, the reason why we don't know the answer of this question to this question is, 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 is because it's difficult to answer to this question. So the, the, the main kind of uh, challenge is that it is very complicated to identify a causal relationship between managers and access to customers. Why is it so? Well, first of all, we need to have a measure of firm specific access to customers which is maybe not so complicated to construct, but you know, we then need to have a manager specific measure on how the manager is potentially able to facilitate such access. And finally, and potentially most important, we need to deal with the matching between firms and workers, right? In this case of manager. And we know that the way managers sort into firms, so the, the, as well as the way firms poach managers from the market, it's certainly not random. So we need to take this, uh, we, we need to take all these things into account in order to, to make some uh, to, to, to make some progress in this in this topic and to have a conclusion that is somehow reasonable and and and, and solid. So, so what we're gonna try to do today is to look at one specific type of knowledge, which it is gonna be export knowledge. Um, and we're gonna do so trying to provide new evidence on the importance of this acquired knowledge. So we're gonna exploit, um, we call it a natural experiment, but we're gonna exploit the sudden and clear end of the civil war in Angola as a natural experiment to show the causal effect of experience, right? So I'm gonna be more precise uh, and I'm gonna give you full uh, details um, about this, this end of this civil war. But the idea is gonna be that, you know, there is a, there is a sudden end of a civil war. Uh, and so we are gonna exploit that to deal with the, end, with the endogenous matching of workers to firms, okay? So once we, once we clear that out, and hopefully when I convince you that, you know, this, this, ex, this natural experiment helps me in, in making this matching quasi exogenous, then I'm gonna to try to provide some evidence on the firm export performance and on the wages of the managers afterwards. So in what happens to these workers and what happens to the firms uh, once they start exporting in, in, the, in this new market, let's say. My laboratory for today, it's gonna to be Portugal. Um, the reason is that Portugal has a very uh, detailed and, and very rich data for, for a very long period of time. Um, and, but we're gonna focus on the period between 1995 and 2005. And in this period, kind of right in the middle of this period, there is the end of the civil war in Angola in 2005, okay? So now Portugal is gonna allow me to collect and put together detailed data on what firms, workers, and trade. So I'm gonna need these three elements to make progress on the research question that I want to, to make progress today. I'm gonna need data on the firms, to, to look at their export performance. I'm gonna need data on the workers to track them over time and to identify those managers. And I'm gonna need data on trade because otherwise I will, I, it will be very difficult for me to make this strong connection between the opening of a new market, okay? A disclaimer, before I go uh, ahead, it's gonna be a purely empirical paper. Um, it's gonna talk um, to some, um, let's say, models uh, in a way. So we're gonna try to make some progress on some measurement. We're gonna try to understand whether actually these workers, these managers help the firm to reduce the fix of the variable costs of exporting. So we think this is, uh, you know, progress in for, for all of us to think about models when we have to model this, this kind of costs uh, in, in, in theory, we try to understand, we, we, we can use this uh, evidence to, to think about how should we model um, how should we think about managers in the firm, whether they help the firm adjusting a specific margin or another. 
I'm going to be kind of agnostic. It's a paper that doesn't require necessarily a, a model or a structural model. So today, I'm just going to look at this uh, in a very reduced form and very way. Okay. So just to give you an idea about the, the broad literature that this paper talks to, there is this huge literature on managers and from performance that has exploded in the in the last 20 years, uh, mainly with the, let's say 10 years, mainly from the uh, very influential surveys uh, by Nick Bloom, uh, John Varinen and co-authors in which they started looking at different margins of uh, uh, managerial um, aspects of the firm, right? So they looked at, uh, uh, at whether it's these good practices of managers help the firm exporting and, and, and or um, at the firms being more productive and more and more efficient. Um, but on top, we try to make progress also on the specific margin of export performance. Previous works um, from Mike Waters, for instance, or more recent works by uh, Patou and Lenoir on the French, uh, on the French uh, data, um, but also the, the, the recent paper by, well, I'm gonna make a disclaimer here again. I don't know if I pronounce this name correctly, but you know it's very difficult for me. Like this tray and coder, uh, they look at importers specifically. They all look at different margins. So we are gonna try to make a, a little bit of progress in that by uh, using a, a, a very unique setup that is gonna allow us to draw a very strong causal statement. So um, we we kind of think that. The uniqueness of this uh, natural experiment is going to help us to make an even stronger causal st statement in terms of what's the impact of the manager in helping in helping firms export the performance. We also kind of talk uh, to the literature that has to do with uh, uh, trade and tasks uh, and the organization of the firm, of which you know some some papers are by Grossman, Rosiansberg, Kaliena, Rosiansberg, and and, and and so on and so forth. So again. Um, what I'm going to try to do today is going to be quantify. I'm going to try to quantify the value of managers' knowledge in terms of export entry probability, and I'm going to try to leverage on this unique setup, which is going to allow me to make a strong causal statement about the relationship between the knowledge of a manager and the performance of employment. Now, just to make another point uh, regarding the you know the importance of this uh, of this kind of question, you know like. If we understand the importance of managers in, in helping the firm grow, we can say something about you know firm size heterogeneity, uh, and and you know we kind of know that firm size matters a lot in aggregate. Bigger firms respond different to shock. The way bigger firms reorganize can have huge implication in terms of of inequality and the distribution of of of, of, of welfare around space. So we think it's important to make this kind of uh, to, to, to make progress in this, in this respect to understand a little bit more the aggregate outcomes uh, in a, from starting from a very micro perspective. So- Alessandro, can I ask a question? Of course, of course. This is, uh, this is Ferdinando, hi. Hi, Ferdinando. Um, so, um, so I guess I, what I wanted to ask is, um, you know, when you, when you look at these data, data sets, you, you probably mm -hmm. have to have some, some sort of, theory in mind about what a manager does, right? You can imagine that, uh, you know, it's, you know, if you, you can have a knowledge-based um, hierarchy view of the firm, you can have a monitoring theory of the firm. You can just say the manager is a fixed cost that reduces the variable cost. And, at, you know, the angle that you, the perspective that you take is going to inform your empirical analysis, right? So I understand you can speak to all these literatures, Mm -hmm. But are you are you gonna have in mind a particular or maybe not necessarily particular, but like a broad view of what the what the manager role is in the firm or or uh, or not? So so we thanks thanks a lot for this question. So so Ferdinand, in 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 this in this kind of uh, specific paper, I mean, uh, we both have done work on 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 organization of the firms, uh, um, and so you know, as you were mentioning, you know, you can think about these. Um, you know, the organization in terms of a knowledge base hierarchy, in terms of span of controls, in terms of like, you know, several sets of model. Um, in, in this specific paper, we're gonna be a little bit more agnostic and we mm -hmm. think about a manager as somebody that has a, a key role, you know, like now what that key role is, is gonna be defined as a, 
basically as a strategic role in the firm. So strategic in the terms of helping the firms exporting. So I'm going to be a little bit agnostic in terms of like you're thinking about a manager that, you know, as a person that solves more problems or a person that we like, you know, can have more or less workers underneath because of the span of control, because of its mm -hmm. knowledge. I'm going to just think about a manager <clears throat> as a person that is going to be strategically involved in the key decisions of the firm. So a little bit more, you know, agnostic, like, you know, you can think about, um, you know, a, a, a model in which you have capital skill complementary or like a, like a production function in which you have different type of workers, one of which is the manager. And that guy is going to be involved in some key strategic decisions, one of which can be exporting. Okay. Make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I understand. Thank you. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's amazing. It's just that, you know, I, I don't want to make a very strong statement in terms of the model because I'm going to be very general in what I'm going to say. So, so you're going to see. You're going to see in a second. Okay. So, let me tell you what I can do with the data. Um, so, kind of standard data for, 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 for organizational economics or for for papers that try to, to identify different types of workers. But, you know, it's very important for me to tell you that these data are very rich. So in the matched employer employee data, which includes the population of firms and workers, I can actually identify managers. And so what is going to be the, this, this manager? It's going to be the workers belonging to one of the two top two hierarchical layers. So in a way, you know, those are the guys at the top of the pyramid. Um, top manager and middle managers, and they're gonna be dealing with strategic decisions, you know? So if you look at the definition of their tasks, they're gonna be people that, you know, make decisions in the firms, um, you know? Um, and then once I have the managers nailed down, then I'm gonna make use of this other data set, which is gonna be the trade database at the transaction level, just gonna give me detailed information on each firm. I'm gonna be able to identify the managers, follow them over time once they, once they move from one firm to the other. And then I'm gonna be able to look at whether these firms export, how much do they export and where. Okay, so um, what do I do with the matching of the two? Well, the matching of the two, it allows me to construct the key variable for my, for my story today, which is export experience, which is basically built by tracking over, by tracking worker over time and across firms. Okay. So what is this export experience that I'm talking about? So let's let's look at this uh, very simple cartoon here. So look at a, at a person that works for a non-exporting firm. Then the person moves eventually to a second firm in the next step of his career or her career. And then finally it moves to a final firm which now export, these firms export to Spain and China. Okay, so there is gonna be this element of mobility. We're gonna track workers over time once they move from one firm to another. And this is gonna be on top of this element of mobility, we're gonna have the element of the knowledge. So if another worker instead, starting from the same firm, then moves to a firm that export to Spain, it's gonna basically, it's gonna be labeled as knowledgeable of the market of the Spain market, okay? So this guy is gonna acquire knowledge by having previously worked for a firm that export to a specific destination market or to a product or a specific product, okay? So we're gonna define the, 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 the knowledge, the, the experience, both in terms of markets, destinations or markets, products. And then these guys are gonna be different in terms of their knowledge, in terms of their experience. Okay, so that's going to be the way we, we define this, uh, this export experience here. So we, we follow workers over time and we kind of label those workers that at some point during their career have acquired knowledge by working for an exporter. And the knowledge is going to be specific to the markets in which this exporter was exporting to while the worker was there. Okay. So then, you know, once we have in mind this kind of very simple, uh, um, definition of, of, of experience, we can think about this in a, in a, in a very simple way. So that's the, man, the presence of a manager with export experience to market M leads the firm to export in market M. So this is kind of the simple equation that we can, we can write down. Like 
So at the right, at the right hand side, we're going to have the presence of this manager. On the left hand side, we're going to have this um, export excuse, file. Excuse yes. me, uh, Alessandro, please, please. I have a couple please, of questions please. for you. Sure. The first question is about uh, the role of tasks, because you said that you are related to the literature trade in tasks but mm -hmm. so far i have seen only a, an element of uh, selecting the managers so i'm wondering whether you have a more detailed use of tasks uh, given that you have very detailed data the second question is the the uh, attribute of uh, of uh, of experience to exports Okay, is, mm -hmm. is, is based on the reasoning that you learn the destination market, but you could mm -hmm. also have it on imports, no? So do you do sure. it in the robustness check or what? Okay, thanks Thanks a lot for, for these questions. Um, so so the, on the first question, um, so th this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a figure that, you know, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be specifically looking at um, the different types uh, the managers are gonna are gonna be dealing with. We can potentially look at different types of managers. We can potentially look at financial managers, at sales managers, at production managers, at general managers, and we did so in some robustness exercises. We try to distinguish uh, among different types of managers to look at whether their specific tasks, their specific knowledge in terms of sales, in terms of financing the firm, in terms of production. Uh, can can have a, a an impact uh, in 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 a specific margin to help the firm start exporting or on the intensive margin. Now, obviously, we're looking at um, we're cutting down the data set in smaller and smaller slices. So we we can show these exercises. I'm gonna lose a little bit uh, the general you know the general picture that I want to keep in mind. Uh, and so we 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 decide on the on the main body of the paper to focus on this on this kind of general definition of managers. That's why I'm not gonna focus so much on the tasks in the main presentation. We have results for all of that. And on the second question regarding imports, um, completely agree with you. So the paper by Bistre and co-author is in fact a paper that looks at imports um, and the mechanism, the logic behind it, it's very, very similar. You know, The idea is that you, know, you are exposed to a specific activity and you learn. So we looked at import as well, um, but we think like for this specific exercise, it's going to be very interesting to look at export because of the because of the Angolan uh, because of the Angolan situation. And I'm going to be more specific in, in a second. You're going to see why it is very very interesting to look at export. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. When I, when I answer to the question, you have, I have you on another screen where the camera is not, so so it might be a little bit confusing where I look at them. But yeah. Okay. So. Let me let me keep uh, going and, and and move a little bit on, on in this respect. So, so I was I was just telling you that you know this this is kind of the very simple model that we can have in mind. So, is the impact of a manager as is having a manager as any impact on on the export of the firm? Obviously, when you look at that equation, the first concern that comes up to your mind is that this matching between firms and manager is clearly endogenous, right? So the way uh, firms poach workers or the way managers sorts in different firms, it's clearly an equilibrium outcome, it's clearly endogenous. And so to solve this problem, you can go two different directions. One way is to have an instrument for the matching, which is you know a very good strategy to go, but it's not obvious to find one that is it's robust and solid enough. Another way to go is to exploit an event study. How do you exploit an event study? And which is, uh, event study are going <clears> to... <throat> We are going to exploit today. Well, we're going to exploit the end of the civil war in Angola. Now, Angola uh, became, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> became independent from Portugal in 1974. But from 1975 until 2002, that country was completely tormented by a, by a tremendous civil war. So over a hundred million people died and a million people have been internally displaced. Now, this civil war, had a sudden end on the second, 22nd of February, 2002, with the death of the leader of the rebel party, Jonas Savinko. Now, this was an overnight thing. You know, the guy was killed overnight. And on the 4th of April, they, they signed the ceasefire. So within a month from the death of the, the rebel leader, the, 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 the war is over. 
So this is kind of a, of a sudden shock. Um, and if you look at, you know, a, a very uh, aggregate kind of export before and after the end of the civil war, you can clearly see that there is a change in the, in the, in the pattern of Portuguese export to Angola. Okay, so you can see that, you know, the ceasefire was a shock that determined like a, a boom in exporting to Angola. And in fact, if you confront the, the behavior of Portuguese exporters to Angola versus other ex-colonies, like for instance, Brazil, Cape, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Sao Tome, uh, and so on, you can clearly see that there is a divergent path, right? So while the, 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 the export to the other ex colony seems to be flat and constant uh, in, the, in the aftermath of the event, the ones towards Angola clearly boomed in response of the end of the civil war, okay? So this is kind of the setup that we have in mind. And now- Alessandro, quick yes. question. So in the specification you showed two slides ago, mm -hmm. um, if it is going to come back in a more uh, fully specified way, you can defer this. But like, I, I wanted to ask, like, there is like all the story behind this, right? With the pictures, the manager yeah, that yeah, had yeah. an experience it's, of exporting to market, um, like all that dynamics are. Yeah, um, yeah. So this yeah. this is just a simplification, just for 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 us to have our mindset on a problem, and then yeah. I'm gonna come with a very ugly specification with the dynamic. Uh, and, and the, the years and everything that you, you might have in mind in, in a couple of slides. This was just to set the stage on how we should think about the problem. And then I'm gonna be more specific and more precise uh, on, on that in, in a moment. Okay, so, so just to, to, to conclude on this kind of the, the, the civil war, this, this, this was uh, what happened. And so let me give you just an example for us to, 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 have, to have it in mind how this um, sudden end of the civil war affected Portuguese exporters. So this is kind of a case study, a firm that we draw from the sample and is a firm producing insulated wires and cables. It's a relatively big firm uh, with hundred employees in 2002 and a turnover of about 30 million euros. So it's a relatively uh, big uh, producer and it kind of almost half like around 40% of the, uh, the, the production of this firm is exported. Where to? Well, to some major European and OECD countries, to Brazil and Mozambique. But before 2002, none of the production of this firm was exported to Angola. Now, sorry. So what happens, uh, uh, what about the managers in, the, in this firm? So if we look at the managers within these firms, there are some that have experience towards Brazil or Mozambique. And some managers, five specifically, had experience previously acquired towards Angola. They are in charge of some a key department, key department in, in the firm, like production, industrial relation, research and development. And now what we are interested in is to understand what happens after 2002. Now the firm starts exporting to Angola. The share of exports towards Angola doubles in one year. And actually two of those managers that had experience towards Angola are promoted to directors and chief executive. So now that's kind of the story that, that we have in mind, right? So we wanna see whether these guys are actually the one that helped the firm start exporting in Angola and whether they benefit themselves from, from, from that. So in a way, um, the, way the war triggered that dormant comparative advantage, right? So, these firms happen to have in-house managers with experience in exporting in Angola, which were, let's say, less useful before and turned out to be extremely valuable in the, in the, in the, in the aftermath of the end of the civil war. So if we wanna put it into, into the difference in different jargon, we're gonna have firms with managers with export experience to Angola that are called, that are gonna be my treated firms, and then we're gonna have firms with managers without export experience to Angola, perhaps towards different markets. And those are gonna be my control firms in this setup, okay? So now let's go to the, to the ugly part of the, you know, the ugly version of the specification that Karen was, was, was looking for. This is a little bit like the, 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 the model that we have in mind. So we're gonna compare firms that are gonna have managers 
And some of them happen to have a manager with expert experience to Angola. And we're going to look at the before and after 2002. We're going to do it in different ways. We're going to do it in a very simple, uh, stylized kind of diff and diff way before and after event study. We're going to do it with a dynamic diff and diff, looking at every year, every year afterwards. We're going to do it in all the, the, the ways that one uh, should think of, you know. Uh, but in this specification, we're going to control for what? For a lot of firm time characteristics, the one that we can measure, productivity or uh, size, the share of skilled workers, age, foreign ownership, and so on and so forth, we're going to condition on firm's fixed effect. And we're going to condition on time fixed effects. Okay? So, and then we're going to look at the two, uh, the two margins, um, the entry margin, so the extensive margin, and the intensive margin. Okay? So in a nutshell, uh, Alessandro, sorry, yeah. maybe you, you 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 said it already and, and I missed it, but can you explain again why the uh, how does the end of the civil war help you with solving the endogenous matching? I would have thought the at the end of the civil war is a, I mean it's just a is 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 a reduction in trade costs. I mean, I mean, from the perspective of a very 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 stylized model, uh, but then these after that these managers are going to move around uh, and the matching is still going to be endogenous after that, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so very good point. Uh, and, and, and the way we think about it, I think is, is the following. Look, so you hired these guys before and you didn't expect that the civil war was, was, was about to end, right? So you hired these guys because of other reasons. Uh, and they, what, some of them happened to have this experience in Angola that was l very little useful before. And so in a way, conditional on, on, the, on the controls, you know, on, on all the, the observables that we can we, we can put in this in this kind of regression, the matching with respect to that specific type of knowledge between firms and work and, and, and workers is gonna be quasi random, you know. And because I had I hired previously, you know, a firm I hired you and another firm's hired Ferdinando, for instance, because of your export experience in some other markets. But you know, Ferdinando happens to have export experience to Angola. That was very little useful before. And so, as you said, in a very stylized model, what happens with the end of the civil war? There is a reduction in trade costs. And so firms can actually enter. So conditioning, conditioning on that firm structure ex ante, so the fact that you, you look at firms that have these managers already, then it's quasi-random. Makes sense? Okay. But in that case, wouldn't you want to just only look at the firms who had the managers before 2002? Is that what this regression is doing? Or are you also including... Yeah, yeah years i mean you know when the in 2003 when the manager gets poached by you know another firm you, and you, then you, you look you, at the correlation between these expert the expert of that firm or so you you can look at you know you can do this exercise in many different ways one way to do to do these exercises to look at firms that only have a manager the right the year before and then look at their evolution you can look at these firms that have the managers two years before or three years before to be even more sure that they were not preparing for the end of the civil war. And that's going to be what we do in the instrument when we, we, we call it an instrument. You know, we look at firms that hired three years before, up to three years before. So we don't look at firms that we, we try to avoid to have that resorting element in the in the regression. Sorry, it's I was not yawning. I almost sneezed. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> okay. Can I, can I... Can I put Thanks. more, <laughs> Alessandro, yeah, can I ahead, put more I? on this? Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Okay, so can you... So Sorry again this for scenario. this, dia, yeah, nice okay, so you, the, the following scenario, can you tell me how, how this uh, shows up or is it is it excluded? So imagine a firm that has hired a manager in year 2000 mm -hmm. with no experience of exporting to Angola. Mm -hmm. And in 2001, before the civil war ended, the firm started exporting to Angola. Mm -hmm. So just pure intensive margin. Year 2002, the, the guy is still in the same firm. Now this is like a reduction in trade costs for them, like other. Mm -hmm. So post 2002, okay, they're gonna benefit, right? It's a boon for them. So mm -hmm. is this firm? Sh so is this contributing to the beta in the intensive? This is a control firm. This is a control okay. firm. Because this is a firm that does not have a manager with export experience towards Angola before the end of the civil war. 
I see. Okay. Because the experience so is it, acquired the experience by working in previous firms. But does the experience have to be? Oh, I see. It's outside of the firm. Condition exactly. Done. And so that's that's the element that we are going to exploit here, right? So in 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 a, in a way, your firm is going to be in my control group, and I'm going to conf confront that firm with another firm that start exporting towards Angola, but as a manager that previously, by working in another firm, acquired experience in Angola. That's going to be the exercise that I'm going to do today. Yeah, make sense? Okay. So, Sandro, I'm sorry I keep you keep slowing you no, down. No, I have a, no worries. A, a question. So, um, so what you're saying is there are some managers in some firms that had some experience in Angola, mm -hmm. and uh, and there was no market value, let's say, associated with my experience in Angola because there was no way I could actually export to Angola. So, you, which, what you're saying, I think, is um, there is no reason to imagine that these managers would sort into particular firms based on the experience they had in Angola because there was no value to them. Uh, okay, so that I understand. What I what I don't understand is is this. It, it could it could be that really what matters to firms is not experience in Angola, but is experience in international markets, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I'm, I'm sorting these, these managers are sorting into firms, not based on experience in Angola, but it's based on experience in international markets and Angola happened to be one of those, right? So what I'm trying to figure out is whether this kind of sorting is problematic for your identification strategy in the sense that you're not sorting based on experience in Angola, but you're sorting on something that is correlated with that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm wondering whether this is, whether you know this consideration is an issue, or whether what you are identifying is really the value of of the manager having experience in Angola, or something that is correlated with his ability to operate in international market, Angola being one of those. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So th this is great because that that allows me to clarify exactly what we are doing here and right. what's the exercise that we 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 are bringing forward here. So. Correct. So th these guys are, are, are sorting into firms because of their knowledge, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But what we are compare, what we are comparing these two firms, both of them have a manager potentially with a lot of international market experience. So okay. one firm has a manager that there is a there is export experience towards I don't know Spain, Brazil, and Germany, and this other firm has a manager that has experience in Brazil, Spain, and Angola. So those two okay. firms are very similar and they poach the guys in a very similar way. Okay. One of them happens to have this dormant comparative advantage. <laughs> this manager has this dormant comparative advantage, which is his experience to Angola, little valuable until 2002. Both managers have experience that is valuable in other markets, potentially towards ex colonies, potentially towards war torn areas. So we try to look at all of that, but one of them happens to have these, you know, like as if like, you know, you, you have a wallet with all your cards of experience and all of them are valuable for both guys. And one is very little valuable until 2002. So it is very reasonable to think that they didn't poach that guy because of that variable, that, that little card, but because of all the others, agreed. And in fact, we are gonna compare a firm having that guy with a firm having a very similar guy, which has experience toward Germany, toward Spain, toward France, you know? And those are gonna be two very similar apples. One apple has a color that is very hidden and very less useful until 2002. So that's exactly what we wanna pin down. And I think by doing this exercise, you know, we condition, like conditioning on, on all these observables, we can kind of claim that what we measure is that experience and it's, you know, and this matching is quasi rapid. Yeah? Makes sense, Ferdinando? It does, thank you. Makes sense? Okay. So let me, let me, let, let me, let me say something, something more on this. 
So what are the assumptions that I need to, to, to do this exercise? Which, you know, like it's great because through, through, towards, like through all these questions, I already disclosed a lot of, of, of what I'm gonna need, uh, which, is, which is amazing. So I'm gonna need a lot of covariates. And so one assumption is gonna be that conditional on the covariates, the matching between these firms and manager, it's gonna be that the end of the civil war was completely unexpected and some civil war. Now, the second assumption is it's kind of very easy to, to prove that through uh, a lot of documents to understand uh, the, the, the history of this civil war. And we kind of figured that it was completely unexpected. There is even further evidence. There is this paper by uh, Guidolin and La Ferrara in, in the AR in 2007, in which they look at Diamond's uh, producer in, in Angola, and they exploit the end of the civil war in Angola as an exogenous shock to these producers. So they kind of show how the markets to the, of the diamond reacted the day afterwards of the end of the civil war. So we are kind of confident that the civil war was completely unexpected in terms of its, in terms of its end. And then in terms of the first assumption, we need to have a battery of controls, including firm productivity plus fixed effects. So we need to condition on whatever we can observe and then we have to look at, you know, as we, as I was explaining a few seconds ago, you know, during this war, this experience in Angola was very little useful. As I was mentioning in the case study before, for instance, in which this firm has these managers, but before, like, you know, they were in charge of some key departments, but their experience was little useful, the specific experience towards Angola. And again, to, to go back to what I was mentioning in Setu Adrian, we're going to instrument and look at these hirings uh, up to T, T minus three. So firms that hired in T minus three, so clearly not in in the in the in the in 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 a you know in, in the proximity of the end of the city. Now having said that, I'm gonna try to show you some results. Okay. And I'm gonna try then to let's say dig a little bit deeper into the mechanism and try to exclude one by one all the doubts that we can have in mind about this, uh, this, this kind of estimation, okay? So the first one, it's gonna be the baseline result. So if you look at this table, what you're gonna notice is that, you know, is it, is it valuable to have a manager with expert experience in Angola? In the first column, the answer is yes. It is, it is good to have a, a manager with expert experience in Angola, but then, is it actually good to have this manager with expert experience before or after the end of the civil war? Well, the, the value of this guy kicks in only after the civil war ends, before it's very little useful, okay? And if you look at the last column, which is the one in which we use this instrument lagging the hiring of the managers up to end periods before, the results are very, very similar. And so they are confirmed. So having a manager with export experience in Angola, it's very useful for the firm to start exporting in that market, especially after the end of the civil war. Okay, and the numbers are very big com com if, you, if you compare it to the unconditional entry rate, which is the first row there. So to summarize the result of this table, the manager access helps at, sorry, the manager helps the firm exporting, especially so after the end of this world war. And the effect is very large. It doubles the unconditional entity. To put it into, into like to, to give it a little bit of a quantitative like, uh, perspective, it is equivalent to a 1.5 standard deviation increase in firm size. So having a manager with this experience is equivalent to an increase in 1.5 standard deviation of firm size. All right, make the this in which we do instead of before after year by year, and you're gonna see that the result, like the the effect, is persistent. It stays over time in each year after 2002, and I can do it, you know, grouping the years in two or three years, you know. But the results are always, always very consistent across all these different specifications. Now, if you are convinced that we do this exercise and we do it properly and we identify this kind of margin, let's say that you know, the manager helps the firm entering the Angolan market because of its knowledge, then you can come to me and you say, look, but there are many other different things that might be going on here. It could be that what you're measuring is experience in conflict areas, in places in which there was a civil war, or you're measuring experience 
towards colonies. Angola is a former colony. So maybe you're just, you know, all of them are correlated with the experience in Angola. Can you actually distinguish these two things? And that's what we do in the first digging deeper, let's say. We look at experience in conflict areas and experience in, in other colonies, uh, other Portuguese format colonies. And we actually find that none of them really plays a, plays a role, right? So if you look at that, it's, it's, yeah. If you see my cursor, I don't know if you see the little hand. Yeah, so if you look here, like, you know, experience in conflict zone per se doesn't seem to play a role in the story. So if you are knowledgeable about exporting into Sao Tome Prince or in Brazil, that's not gonna help you substantially uh, sorry, uh, if you are knowledgeable exporting in, in, in other countries that have been plugged by a civil war or, or, or conflict in, in, in the past, it's not going to necessarily help you to export to Angola. And the same applies when you look at experience towards ex colonies. So, having a manager with experience in Brazil, in uh, Timor Leste, or Sao Tome, or the other ex colony is not going to give you an edge when you want to start exporting to Angola in the aftermath of the end of the civil war. Now, this is one Sorry. thing, Alessandro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Adrian. This is a, a minor point, but I mean, the standard errors are kind of the same with the, it's just that the point estimate is smaller, so you don't get a statistically significant effect. But another way to, if you just think it's a, it's a power issue, you could also imagine saying, having experience in other ex colonies helps you a little bit, just less so kind of about half of helping you as much as having a manager that had experience with Angola. And, and, then, and then it's unclear because the standard errors are big. Yeah, so I mean, you, you know, point taken, uh, fair. I, I, I cannot say you're wrong or you're right. You know, we, we, we can both see these, uh, these standard barriers. Certainly, you know, it is a power issue, but it's also the, 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 the coefficient is much smaller. So it's, it's really, um, um, it's, you know, if anything is a marginal story compared to how big it is, the, the main coefficient of you know having a manager with expert experience specifically to Angola, right? So so that that's the story that is going on. Everything else is uh, is you know not necessarily as relevant uh, as as the main story. Okay, so then another kind of concern that that or another curiosity, something that you might be interested in, that could be to understand whether. It is really a matter of having knowledge in terms of a market, a destination market, a country. If a manager has knowledge in terms, in terms of the, the characteristics of that country, whether that matters most or whether it is important to have knowledge about products, exporting specific products. And so we look at this kind of uh, margin here. And in, in this table, what we show you is um, whether it is important to have experience in, um, in, in, in a specific product or in, in, in a specific product to Angola. Okay, so, and what we kind of can conclude from this table is that what matters is, is really the, the, the combination of the two. You know, you need to have experience uh, towards the country Angola to make the experience into the product matter. Uh, for you, so it's not really the product; it's 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 more about the the the, the destination part. Okay, so we we so again we we don't find any product specific export experience value here, um, and so again this this doesn't seem to be the main driver of our story. Now, to conclude on this uh, set of digging deeper, I want to highlight uh, a couple of more things. So. I started this talk um, and this whole conversation today by saying one reason why we want to study this is because we, we don't have a very good understanding of whether um, a manager helps the firms to, to reduce the fixed cost of exporting or rather the variable cost of exporting. Um, we, we kind of don't know that very well. And so one way to look at that problem and to try to make progress in that direction is to, is to do an exercise like that. So it's important then to also look at what happens in terms of the intensive margin. Do the firm that have a manager with export experience in Angola manage to export also more 
what it is really about entering the market. Is it really about the fixed cost or is it really about the variable cost? And so I showed you the fixed cost. And when we look at the variable cost, we don't see anything happening. So it seems to be the case that the story, it's really about the, the, the fixed cost of exporting, okay? Now, finally, and again, to, to, to go back to, to, to what I was mentioning at the beginning in the, in the kind of example, in the case study, I was telling you, look, let's take one firm in this sample and then let's look at this firm that has, um, that, you know, that has these managers and these managers in the aftermath of the civil war, they start being in charge of key departments, you know. Um, so we, we, we also expect those guys to experience a, a wage premium in the aftermath of the end of the civil war, right? So if, they, if, they're ex if their export experience becomes valuable, if their uh, dormant comparative advantage now becomes valuable for the firm, they should experience some wage period. And that's the exercise that we do in the last point of this kind of ticking lever. So we look, we, 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 we run a standard mean serial and wage equation, and we try to check whether these guys, uh, these managers with export experience in Angola, it, they, they're gonna they're gonna have a wage premium uh, in in response to to their to their skills and now and to their knowledge that now happens to be very valuable, and we actually find that their wage premium is lower than the average during the civil war, but it's higher than the average in the aftermath of the, of the civil war. So if you bring together all these uh, pieces of evidence, you know, the picture is kind of clear and, and, and it seems to point to the fact that, that you know, when you study this, 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 this kind of question, the manager uh, with export experience with Angola seems to be valuable for the firm. They, they help the firm start exporting. They experience a, a, a wage premium in, in, in the aftermath of the end of the civil war. And we can try to rule out, we, we can actually can rule out all these alternative mechanism here to say that when you study the role of managerial knowledge in determining the chances of export of new market, we can have a quasi-random matching of managers to firms in the economy after the civil war. And we find, and we are kind of confident on these results, that it doubles the probability to enter a new market and is equivalent to a 1.5 increase, uh, standard deviation increase in firm size. So, so all in all, it seems to point very clearly towards a reduction in the fixed cost. And that's it for today. So Alessandro, this is equivalent to one standard deviation. This is in revenues, is that right? Yeah. Um, it's a big number, but I wonder how big it is relative to the average entrant to the Angola, Angolan market. Um, what do you mean? So you can identify the post civil war Portuguese entrance, right? Like the treatment group. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can imagine effects in both directions. It could be that Angola just coming out of the civil war is still a hard market to enter. So the mm -hmm. early firm that enters is actually pretty big, but it could also be that it's an ex-colony language is not an issue. It could be an easy market to enter. The average entrant could be less than, you know, uh, the average exporter size, so I don't know, but um, this 1.5 standard deviation relative to the entrance to the Angolan market post Civil War, then that number could be, I think, a good sense of would give a good sense of relative for that. Okay, firm. so you would like to know, for instance, what is the average size of the entrance in the in the aftermath of the Civil War, and yeah, so, so that say, this number is. It's Suppose this on, is uh, yeah. 1 million euros and the average entrance uh, annual exports are 50 million euros, then this is a 2% increase. So, yeah, so we, we, we did some calculation that sound very similar to, to what you're asking for, but I'm not exactly sure whether it's really what you're asking for. So I don't want to say something that potentially is imprecise. Well, general, but I, yeah, so that's yeah. just a suggestion. Yeah. If, yeah, the general uh, spirit of my it's a relative 
size yeah, yeah. with respect to the entrant, uh, but I can follow up if it is not clear. Yeah, yeah no. thanks. I'm going to note it down. Alessandro, can I ask a question on the negative wage premium? Um, yeah. Can, can you go back on the slide where you made that statement? I guess sure. I missed a little bit of the wage premium to Angola is lower than average. I see. So, yeah. so there's a negative. Do you have that in the regression? Can I see that? That one. Okay. So, so I was wondering, um, I mean, I would have thought that if the export to Angola was not priced, meaning you would have a zero value, then that coefficient should have been zero. Am I reading this correctly? Like pre-reform, pre, pre, um, end of pre the end war. of the civil war, right? And so I'm wondering whether the fact that you find a negative and uh, statistically significant coefficient is pointing mm -hmm. to the fact that those characteristics are correlated to something that is of some value, you know, whether a positive or negative value, but of some value, right? Uh, and so, um, I mean, I guess I just don't know what, what to make of that negative coefficient before. I would have thought it would have been at zero if it's true that they don't sort. So, so there are, there are different, yeah. So there are there are different potential answers to, to 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 your question. So a very conservative answer would be: look, if that is you know if that is concerning for you, what I'm estimating is a is a lower bound, right? In the whole story that I told you, I'm estimating a lower bound because if those guys are worse than than the other ones, so in, if anything, I have a negative sort. Right? So it's a negative assortative matching in a way between firms and managers. Those those guys are worse. And the others that don't have export experience in Angola. So the whole story that I told you today is a lower bound. That's you know a defensive kind of answer. Um, it, it's, it's one answer potentially. Uh, another way to think about it is that you know here you're looking at the export experience for Angola for these guys, and you know. Maybe and, and, and it's the overall period. So like it's it's the sorry, it's the pre, the pre period. Is their export experience towards Angola granting them a wage premium? Not really. Um, is it a little bit like negative? Yes, it is. But you're right. I mean, I understand what you yeah, I should think a little bit more about okay. that. Can I ask what is the first control um, there? Okay. Can I add a couple of things just related sure. to this? So, Luca, go ahead. But by the way, yeah. great paper, very interesting. Um, uh, so uh, if you want to find the, the wage premium uh, for having experience exporting to Angola, you have to put together the first two, two rows. Yeah, that's you are, why I asked what, what is in the first, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. That's, the second that's row just show you yeah, that sorry. Uh, when you look at experience specifically in exporting to Angola, that's less valuable than the average before the end of the civil war. And that's why it's a negative coefficient. I see. But then when you look after uh, the end of the civil war, then it becomes more valuable than the average. So, if, but then if you, if you really want to see what's the wage premium for before the end of the civil war, you should put together the first two and you can check that. Um, and, it, it might still be positive after all, but it's less than the average. Um, another consideration is that this is a, a kind of supporting evidence. So here we, we are, uh, we are uh, dealing less well with the problem of endogenous matching because it's just a, a Mincerian wage regression without uh, any, uh, any IV. So with respect to to the uh, to the entry regression here we are a little bit less uh, uh, sophisticated so. so 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 the so the first control there is uh, is a dummy for whether you have any experience in export how what is, what is that the first the first row yeah, should I answer uh, Alessandro you answer I, I don't know if you if it, it's in the flag you know it's uh... 
So go ahead, Luca, if you want. Yeah. Is, the, is the wage premium for having experience in exporting to for for um, for having experience in export in a, in a country to which towards which you are exporting to? It can in, in, it can be Angola, it can be Brazil, it can be France, Italy. Uh, so this is what we call match expert experience when you are exporting to a given country, say Italy. Uh -huh, I see. You have a manager that has expert experience exporting to Italy. That's match. So the interpretation yeah. is a little subtler, right? Because then when if you fix on that total experience and you increase the export in Angola, what you're really doing is you're comparing to managers that have fewer experience somewhere else, right? Because they're conditioning on the total one. So, sorry, could you repeat that? I, I was just saying that because you're conditioning on a total ex, on a total max matched export experience, if you are looking at the regressor with that increases the export to the ex, experience to the Angola, then you're you are you are implicitly reducing export export experience to the other to the other markets because you're conditioning on the total level right in, in the first in the first uh, line. Um, I'm sure. you're muted. So, I mean, uh, um, can I add to that question? Can the same manager, uh, if Angola is only one market in her portfolio, can also show up in the in the first? That that's what I mean. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So then I mean. maybe Angola is kind of a marginal. You get a lot of additional wage and great revenue from Brazil, from US, from Germany, but Angola is kind of where you run into diminishing returns. Yeah. Yeah, so that 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 could be, and, and that's a potential reason why you have these negatives as well. Uh -huh. um, but after but again, the war, whatever it is, it goes up after the war. Yeah. Yeah, and again, this is, you know, this is part of this digging deeper, you know, this is, you know, just, other pieces that we try to put together to to show that you know everything points towards the story which is look this guy they make a difference they make a difference in a specific way towards a specific margin which is reducing the fixed cost and then if you ask us do they have also wage premium in response to that the answer is yes especially so after the end of the civil war but again this is this is also like this is a table that you know um, we are less confident about compared to this to the previous uh, exercise because it's dealing a little bit less uh, formally with the problem of endogeneity of the matching. You know, so again, it's 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 um, the side evidence that we want to provide to to give additional uh, power to the to the main story. Uh, yeah, I go back. Let's see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and sorry for, uh, yeah. No. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, any other questions? Well, thanks, uh, Alessandro and Luca. Um, thanks a lot. And everyone uh, for joining. So we'll continue in two weeks, I think June 6th. Uh, on uh, again on another Monday with, with Jose Vasquez. So uh, again, everyone, thanks for uh, the paper, Alessandro. It's super interesting. Um, thanks a lot for all the questions. Absolutely. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Good to see you all. Thanks a lot. Thanks for all the questions, Thank for all you. the comments, yeah. and uh, and thanks a lot for, for all. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let me stop the sharing.